A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over the hearts of the children of Israel. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. All of us, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, as from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. And even though our gospel is veiled, it is veiled for those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. The glory of the Lord will dwell in our land. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother Raka will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says you fool will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yet another exhortation of our Lord for interiority, for an interior life. It's not just what we do on the surface that counts. Uh, That's not our justification. That's not our righteousness. There's got to be something deeper going on in our souls. The righteousness of the Pharisees is very external, very superficial. They follow all the the Mosaic commands. They follow all the law. But like Jesus says on another occasion, uh, inside they're they're corrupt. They're like whitewashed tombs. Uh, So it's interesting here Jesus saying, basically, look, tend to the things that are going on inside of your heart. In this case, anger, anger, irritability, impatience. How many, how much, how many of us deal with those, those issues every day? Whether it's uh, with your children or your spouse or your boss, traffic, the world, society, politics, the church, priests, anger, impatience, irritability. Jesus saying, look, if you've got these things going on in your heart, okay, forget the gift at the altar. Let that go and go tend to what's going on inside of you. In this case, if you're angry with your brother, make amends with him first and then go worry about the gift at the altar. So the gift at the altar is symbolic representative of the external action. So you're, you know, 
you're praying your rosary or you're going to church and you know, yeah, okay, you're doing the external ritual, but inside you're, you're seething or you're distracted. Uh, you're, you're unable to surrender. You're upset about something. What Jesus would say is, okay, look, pause, time out on the rosary, even on the mass, because what good is the mass or the rosary or these things doing if the inside of you is all in turmoil? It's, it's like a pipe. A pipe is blocked and God's grace through the, the sacraments or the, the prayers can't get into our hearts because our hearts are filled with something. So again, it's, it's nothing new uh, that we've talked about before, but I think it's really important from time to time just to, uh, when we're praying, just to see what, what's going on in our hearts. And if, if we're struggling with the prayer, it might be because we're not tending to that interiority. If we find ourselves distracted or again, we're, you know, we're thinking angry or resentful thoughts, uh, why? What's going on? Have that conversation with the Lord. Let his grace come into you to, uh, to heal you of those things. Um, and then look, look at, uh, look at this first reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, which is really quite profound. In fact, the veil of the Lord is removed. So Moses had the veil. That is, they had to do the external law. They couldn't get to that interiority, but but not anymore. Not with the Lord of the Spirit in the age of Jesus Christ. There's freedom. And then Paul's got this line. It's very famous. He says, gazing with unveiled face on the glory of the Lord, all of us are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory as from the Lord who is the Spirit. You might want to listen to that again or read it. When we gaze on the face of the Lord in prayer. And by the way, that's why adoration is really important because we're literally doing that. We're gazing on the face of the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. We are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So we're transformed into Christ. And Christ, as we all know, Prince of Peace, he's not filled with anger or bitterness or irritability or impatience or all these things. So let's pray this day. Let's let the Holy Spirit and the glory of the Lord settle our hearts, clear us, make us free, make us his beloved sons and daughters. Amen.